we all know from our Calculus 1 class that differentiability implies continuity, but the converse is not necessarily true. Continuity does not necessarily imply differentiability. But one question we rarely ask in our introductory calculus class is whether f prime is necessarily continuous. And specifically, my question is if a function f that maps from the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers is continuous and differentiable at every single point, those derivatives have to be continuous at every point. And if you've never seen this before, pause the video and think about this for 5 seconds, 10 seconds, and see what your intuition is telling you. Well, I'm going to tell you the answer right away. The answer is actually no, derivative does not have to be continuous. And as an example, we are going to take a look at this f of x. But before we start, I want to quickly review some basic limits, namely limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 1 over x. And this is the graph of y equals to sine of 1 over x generated using geogebra.org. Geogebra.org, I want to make sure I give credit. And as you probably remember, this limit does not exist. And how come it does not exist? Well, we are having these infinite oscillations between 1 and negative 1. More mathematically stated, no matter what interval you pick centered at 0, you are going to have infinitely many oscillations between 1 and negative 1, meaning that you cannot get infinitesimally close to one single value as you are approaching 0, so limit does not exist. But now we are taking a look at a function that looks slightly different, x squared times sine of 1 over x when x is not equal to 0, and when x is equal to 0, partly to avoid dividing by 0, we are going to let our f of x be 0. And here's my assertion. I assert that our function is continuous and differentiable at every single point, even x equals to 0. So what I'm saying is that our limit as x approaches 0 of f of x exists and it is equal to value at f of 0, or 0, so that's what I'm asserting. And I'm also saying that it's differentiable at 0 and, of course, every other point. So what I'm also saying is that f prime at 0 exists. But here's the punchline. I assert that our f prime is discontinuous. It's not continuous at x equals to 0. So there are three things we want to prove. First, that f is continuous. Second, that f is differentiable. And third, that f prime is discontinuous at zero. So let's begin. Let's start with the first one. That limit as x approaches zero of our function is equal to zero. And to make our discussion easier, let's go down. And here's another graph from geogebra.org. And this one is the graph of y equals to x squared times sine of 1 over x. And the top function is y equals to x squared. And the bottom function is y equals to negative x squared. And it looks like from the graph that our function, our f of x, is sandwiched or squeezed in between these two parabolas. So in your mind, you may be thinking of squeeze theorem. So let's actually apply it. So we want to show that limit as x approaches 0 of our function x squared times the sine of 1 over x is 0. And the easy way of proving this is to realize that our sine of 1 over x is a bounded function. It's always between 1 and negative 1, no matter what x you plug in because the sign of any real number is always between negative 1 and 1. So this inequality is telling us that negative x squared is less than or equal to x squared times the sine of 1 over x is less than or equal to x squared, multiplying every single side by x squared, which is non-negative, so we don't have to worry about flipping the signs. And we see that limit as x approaches 0 of negative x squared and x squared are going to be 0, which means our function that's sandwiched in between them by the squeeze theorem is also going to approach 0 as x approaches 0. So we are approaching 0 right here. And since we are letting our f at 0 be 0, we know our function is continuous at 0. Now let's prove our second assertion that f is differentiable at every point. And obviously when x is not equal to 0, we know from our calculus class 
that f prime of x is going to be differentiating this entire thing using product rule gets us 2x times sine of 1 over x plus x squared times when you differentiate sine of 1 over x that's going to get us cosine of 1 over x times differentiating 1 over x negative 1 over x squared which is going to be 2x sine of 1 over x minus cosine of 1 over x x squared are going to cancel out and this is when x is not equal to 0 so when x is not equal to 0 we can differentiate like we always do but when x is 0 how do we differentiate our function well, we can always refer back to the definition of derivative. The derivative at x equals to 0 is defined to be the limit as x approaches 0 of our function x squared sine of 1 over x minus our function at 0 over x minus 0. So I'm just using the definition of derivative. And if this limit exists, we know our f is differentiable at 0. And can we find this limit? Well, when f is 0, we get 0, so we can ignore these. And we know this is limit as x approaches 0 of x times the sine of 1 over x. And we can use the same reasoning with the squeeze theorem. We know sine of x is always bounded between negative 1 and 1. That's telling us x times the sine of 1 over x is always bounded between absolute value of x and negative absolute value of x. And because both of these approach 0, as x approaches 0, we know x times the sine of 1 over x by the squeeze theorem approaches 0. So we know this thing is 0, and because the limit exists, we know our function is differentiable at 0, namely f prime at 0 is 0. So we have shown the second statement as well. Now, on to what we want to show, that f prime is discontinuous at x equals to 0. So let's take a look at our f prime. And now let's take the limit as x approaches 0 of our f prime of x, or in this case, 2x sine of 1 over x minus cosine of 1 over x. Well, Limit of 2x sine of 1 over x is going to be 0 using the same reasoning. But what's the limit? Well, what's the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of 1 over x? This does not exist because we know cosine of 1 over x is going to behave very similarly to sine of 1 over x. As we are approaching 0, cosine of 1 over x is going to oscillate between 1 and negative 1 infinitely many times. So this thing is not going to exist, which is telling us that our derivative is not continuous at x equals to 0. Limit as x approaches 0 of f prime does not exist. And there is one more interesting thing I want to point out, is that maybe we can copy this function in a consecutive manner throughout the real line. So what I mean is if you copy this interesting fragment of our function, so this is x squared times the sine of 1 over x bounded between, who knows, negative 2 and 2. And if you copy this multiple times, so here's another one, and you can have another one. So if you're copying the same thing throughout the real line, then we are going to have a function that's continuous and differentiable at every single point. But f prime is not going to be continuous at infinitely many points. So not only does f prime not have to be continuous at one point, it does not have to be continuous at infinitely many points, which is simply fascinating. Anyway, the answer to this question is no.